everybody. Welcome everyone to the Late Night Restaurant Show. Dominic, once again, is probably having a nap. Dominic, you're listening to this or you're joining us right now. I can't believe you're in, you're in, this you're in Toronto right now. And we're we're in Edmonton, and I stream you in, and you don't even show up. I don't. You don't even show up. I don't even get it. I don't even get this. Anyways, we're we're here live today at California Pizza Kitchen. We got the owner, and I'm excited so much to let him introduce himself and talk about what makes this place such a great place to be. But this is actually the first time for a late night show that we've done at a restaurant. Did you know that? The first time. Is it's a restaurant. It's the first time. Oh. Yeah, it's the first time. Well, I've done it before, but not for a late night. It's usually late night. <laughs> it's not a podcast. See, you get it. Where's Dominic when you need this? Right? Anyways, everyone, we're going to turn the cameras on here. But before we get started, we have a little announcement to talk about today. But before we get started, we're going to roll our intro. It's our new intro. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the National Restaurant Association show that's coming up on... May 18th to the 21st in Chicago at the McCormick Place. I guess it is not the Spice Place, apparently. <laughs> it's the arena. And anyways, we're going to play this and then we'll be right back in a second. Step my game. Step my everyone from late night restaurant show not a podcast not a podcast <laughs> just so you know <laughs> but you think it's funny I do <laughs> you do know so we're gonna turn our cameras on i think this well, that's the moving one yeah only, i'm all over here anyways welcome everyone you know before we get started we have a friendly announcement because the national restaurant association show event is coming up and we got our first ad read can i help you with this Okay. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about this, folks. So this is our first. It's May 18th to the 21st in Chicago. The National Restaurant Show. It is, you know, it's the largest gathering. In the Western Hemisphere. Like, that's big. That's huge. That's huge. I'm a professional. 55,000 professionals are going to be there. Right? So there's, it's 10 football fields. I'm not a category. <laughs> For the 900. It's like you're reading this. It's a miracle. <laughs> so, anyways, you know what? There's going to be amazing a whole bunch of celebrity chefs. There's going to be keynotes. And you know what? You can actually go to the NRA's show's website and they got a list of different speakers and different events and everything else. And also, you know what's new? Well, you know what? There's an expo and an education path. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Neither do I. But if you if you read this, it will definitely tell you. You know what? There's going to be ways to, you know, you're going to learn about solutions, different perspectives. If you're reading this, and this is also, we're going to work on operator-led educational content. So you're not learning from goofballs like myself that don't run, run a restaurant. You'll be learning from people like yourself. Yes. Yes. Fresh on floor programming. Right? Find new speakers. Give me a ton of speakers. You sit in those. Do you sit in those speakers? You? Yeah. Like you could actually speak at those. Have you? Have you, have you ever spoke? Have you spoken? Serious? You should start. You'd be really good at it. Just so you know, you'd be really good. 
Anyways, there's also a startup out, but you don't know what that is either. Tell me. That is where there's new companies coming into the place. You'll be able to go there, check out all these new companies. And then what's better than that? I will, because it gives us an opportunity to work with new people. Find new beverage items, new equipment items, innovation. innovation. Do you do that here? Do you? Are you supposed to? No, I'm supposed to. This is not a podcast. This is not a podcast, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Well, introduce yourself. All right. Well, I'm Nikki Curry, I'm the CEO of California Pizza Kitchen here in Canada and Alberta. Um, I've been in business for oh, born in the area. Jay. Were you born in a restaurant? I think was born in a restaurant. Were you born in a booth? Yeah, I fish area. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Born in a booth. <laughs> I've never met anyone. I used to sleep in the booth. You and me both. Yeah. That was a whole different time. That was a whole different time. Right. Time. You're, you're, was, <laughs> business was going to you're alive. Oh. No, I was, <laughs> not when you're in your 20s. I was talking about when I was like young. Young. Oh, you were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Parents were, you know, like doing their thing. You'd hang out in the booth. Yeah, that's Oh my God. So by the way, just so you know, it's not a podcast tonight, but I forgot also because we have sponsors now, we have to talk about tonight's discussion has no opinion on their sponsors. Nope. So okay. don't listen to us and then look at the sponsors. No relationship at all. Nope. That's a professional disclaimer. Just so you know. Anyways, um, well, we got lots of people on LinkedIn for us. We love questions or comments tonight. And you know what? Oh, there's Jen. Oh. There we go. Jensen. Jensen. Surprise. He's probably in Toronto right now in this hotel room listening to us. I to go get you can tell him. <laughs> you can tell him. Go find Dominic. He didn't show up. He's having a nap. He's at the buffet. Anyways, um, how, so how long have you been in the industry? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, I want to say... So my first job was working at my parents' pizza joint, um, washing dishes, and then it was uh, doing prep, and uh, and then I moved into front of the house. Yeah. Really? So yeah, back in house first. That's I remember you. painting uh, the entire back area, and I was like, "Wow, serious?" I did such a terrible <laughs> job. Then. I don't even. I don't even know what they had to do. It was. <laughs> it was like go to paint. No way. Paint this entire stock area, and I remember destroying all of the food items on the like, corner, painting everything with green the back. It's been paint all over. And it was. Yeah. It was. It was a mess. It was a mess. And then, then, then you said, you know what? I, I, I want to stay in the industry. I loved it from the time I was yeah. really? like, like you know, my my mom had such a huge time. And so I was, like you said, I was born in Canada. Yeah, yeah. And my parents' uh, first kid who was in Canada was a restaurant. Um, they both had careers, but they loved the restaurant business. So it was like they do their day job and then they go to the restaurant. Wow. Right there. So did yeah. you did you did you enjoy it? Like when did you find out that it was like no, this is going to be the career of high school? Yeah, I was. I was or in high school. So, so my mom used to tell me whatever you want to do in life or whatever your goals are, put them on your mirror in your bathroom. Serious? Yeah, I was 15 years old, and the first thing I put on that mirror was I want to be a franchisee. Shut the door. By Serious? By my 23rd birthday, I was 15 years old. Yeah, and this is like you know. Goal setting from an immigrant mentality is like you come here, you set that goal, and then you do everything. Really? And it just it's that, uh, and, it, and it, it manifested. You know what? On my twenty-third birthday, I was a franchisee. Wow! Wow! Um, yeah. Do you think that that worked? I mean, it taught me a lot of lessons. It was a really rough <laughs> goal. I, I didn't really <laughs> understand what it entailed. And I could just kind of read uh, yeah. I was I was naive to understanding. I mean, I understood business because I'd been in it for a number of years, and I 
sat and watched how she negotiated loans with the bank, and I would always say to her, "Can I sit in on a few of your meetings?" Yeah, I sat in when she negotiated yeah. with her landlords, and so I'm, you know, 16, 17, yeah. watching all of these things unfold. I just sit in the back of the room, and it was a really cool learning experience. And then at 23, I felt like I didn't know how to do it. I wanted to get out on my own and do it. Like, <laughs> we won't have commercials to cut and then go back. <laughs> Anyways, we have a lot of people join us on LinkedIn. We do like questions, so please send in questions. We're live tonight from California Pizza Kitchen in Edmonton. This is probably one of the nicest restaurants. Yeah, it is. It really is. I love the color, the vibe. It's really cool. And we'll get back to the restaurant in a second. So you're 16. You're sitting in. I don't get this because 16-year-olds back then it was about partying and having a good time. And you want you're learning about the business. Okay, <laughs> okay. I just you know, was, was it blend? I, I worked hard at it, right? I mean, we were. It's a late you know, night we, show, so we can get into that <laughs> stuff. We owned the restaurants and bars, yeah. so it was like you know. I, I, yeah. I recall it. I was a porter、uh, in one of our restaurants、uh, on Friday, Saturday nights. It was really busy,、yeah. and I actually remember the Oilers game. Serious? Yeah. After winning a bunch of games, and I was always in tears. Are you kidding? Serious? Sir, yeah, hundred percent. It was, but it was a different time. I mean, things were very easy going back then.、Um, But and that wasn't the part that enticed me about the business. It was it was like I just watched how much fun people had in the social center,、yeah. and I was like, I want to keep creating. I, I love creating that. I love watching people enjoy their food and have deep meaningful conversations, or going out on a date, or taking、mm-hmm. the kids. Or, like I just I love I love everything behind it. The chaos in that kitchen, and a lot of people at the time, because those were closed kitchens, you didn't have open kitchens, so you had、no. chefs yelling. You know the servers are calling for food that's late, and it's like the servers are sitting in the back yeah, chilling and smoking. Maybe yeah, so okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, back、But、then it like, probably was. Back then it probably was the past, like in the past. Yeah, and it was.、Uh, it was like, the chefs were cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna it's late night. It's late night. We can well, do that. I saw a lot of things I should have seen. Year old,、uh, a lot of lessons learned.、Um, but it was, it was, it was a really cool experience. And I, at that point,、um, I was like, I'm gonna be the accountant because I need a designation. I need some behind me, and、um, and and because people can take. You know, you lose everything, but you can't lose your degree, right, or your education. And so, who's like two types of education? The, the theory and then the practical. The practical of that international was just,、yeah. it was, it was life changing. Like, I didn't want to do anything else. I knew that. Stop. Yeah. Did you like always like that? There was always something going on in the environment. Yeah, and I think that's like, why I, I, I haven't been diagnosed, but I am one hundred percent. Oh, oh! Look who showed up! Look who shows up! Wait a second! Look at this! Look at this! Did you wake up? No, I just got back from dinner. I had to get get here from. Hi, so our guests don't feel like you forgot about. <laughs> I did not forget about you guys. I was driving. You know what traffic's like here in Toronto? It's a shit show, man. I know, but you, you're supposed to say like my computer had to reboot. <laughs> I can't lie, Jay. You, know you know that. I know you've got life of living in Toronto. I was there for three years, and、like. I know exactly what that traffic is like.、Yep. Dominic, this is the first show we do in a restaurant, and you're ten minutes late. Wow, fifteen. But okay, who's counting? <laughs> I, I was even lying about the time. I can't even lie. The damn clock in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey how you、that. doing? I got a. I think I got a. Jay, my my filter doesn't work on my phone. <laughs> my 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 young <laughs> filter. Say this stuff when we're on live. Yeah. We have a, we have a touch up camera button. It drops Dominic's age to me years. He's actually a senior citizen in Toronto. 
<laughs> He's at a senior home right now. He just got done playing <laughs> shuffleboard. <laughs> There's nothing wrong doing? with shuffleboard. I'm just trying to adjust my camera here to. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't want to insult all the shuffleboard players on LinkedIn right now. I would kick your ass, by the way. Oh, you left. <laughs> he's, he's done with us. He's, he's, he's like 60 he's seconds. Exactly. Um, <laughs> restaurant guy and Dominic. Yeah, exactly. And then exactly. Right. Oh my God. He'll be back. He'll be back. Uh, now he's going to have to do the ad read when he comes back. Now. Oh, there we go. What are you doing? I was, I was trying to adjust my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Unsuccessfully. So, Dominic. Yes, We're in California Pizza Kitchen right now in Edmonton. Oh, awesome. About to dive into a pizza here, too. It looks pretty good. Oh. Are you drinking water? Why is that? That's unfair. That's not fair, <laughs> man. Oh, what kind of pizza are you having? It's like it's pepperoni. Is it pepperoni? It's got spicy honey. Well, okay, it's what's got hot honey on it? Are you serious? Oh, uh -huh. Is this the local hot honey? Yeah. From... Um, I want to Is it Alberta? Yeah. Yeah, it's Alberta. Alberta. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So don't... Damn it, show you the picture. Do that pie, buddy. Mm. Yeah, I, out. I, I've listed pizza as my favorite food, which it is by a lot. But if you only ever had to eat one food, what would it be? And a lot of people would say steak or something crazy, like something. And I say pizza because there's lots of good pizza. You can make it into anything you want. That's exactly. Cool. Pizza is the number. That is like... And it you could even have pineapple on it, apparently, right? Every type of ingredient that you need. It's got carbs, it's got protein, it's got nuts. You can do everything with it. Right. Yes, pizza, 100%. That is my... That's my go-to. Dominic. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to do your ad read right now? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Are, are <laughs> you going to show it? Second ad read. Well, the National Restaurant Association show would love us to do another ad read, which we we do love them. You, I, I yeah, we like, you. yeah, we love them for sure. I sent it to you. Did you get it? Oh, um, if you send sure. it to me in a text, I can read it. I, I can probably do it. I could ad lib it and probably do a pretty good job of it. Okay. Well, what's the dates? In May. <laughs> I'm going to say May 7th. No, it's May uh, no, no, 19, no. 2021 or 2021, 20, 22, 23. Oh, my. They're going to put it in the chat. There you go. It's in the chat. So, everyone, you know what? It is the Western Hemisphere's largest show. It's from May 18th to the 21st. It's in Chicago. It's at the McCormick Center, which is not the Spice Hut. The Dr. <laughs> And we are going to be there as well. 900 Nine. product categories, Jay. 900. 900. I didn't know there was even that many. Did you know? There was 900 many? product categories. I had no idea there was that many. It's, it's just wild. 900 product categories. 900. when you look at it at 10 football fields. <laughs> right? like, what are you yeah. doing weeknights at 9.30 Eastern time? <laughs> What a new job. <laughs> Apparently someone can else doesn't sleep like, in. So Dominic. Yes, sir. We encourage people to attend the show. Mm -hmm. You know what? They can actually go to nationalrestaurantassociation.com. Promo code. We got our own promo code, Dominic. Podcast 24 to save $55 off your current registration rate. That's awesome. That's a, that's a big... I, I can tell you at another restaurant show, people are begging for promo codes or um, discount codes or, you know, free passes. If those can, uh, you saw the lineup, the, that, yeah. that show that we're talking about is this show times 20. It's massive. And if you've never been, you should go. Cause it's awesome. It's freaking awesome. So, it's freaking awesome. I don't know if that was in the ad read, but thank you. Um, we're also just to, just to make sure there's a dis disclaimer, May 16th, this promo dies at eight, May 16th, but you don't wait till May 16th to get your tickets. That's no, no, get them now. You, have, you need to redeem them through online registration. That is the only way you can get it validated as well. 
Mm-hmm. You can't combine, so don't cheat out. Don't try podcast twenty four. Podcast twenty four, right? Say fifty five bucks, and that's American dollars. So it's like a hundred and twelve Canadian or something. It's a big money. No, he's right. He's right. He's right. That is like that is like five Starbucks. <laughs> no, more than that. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, Have it's you probably, had the one with the oil in it? Have you had the Starbucks? <laughs> the new olive oil. Where is the olive oil? That's olive oil shot. <laughs> yes. Olive oil in your coffee. Have you had it? It's like a well, they kind of like it is a bullet coffee. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that later. All right. But no, it is. It is. This, well, first of all, I love Starbucks and the coffee, but it's an expensive treat once in a while. So, you here? Yeah. Yeah. You can do it here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but if you okay. consider the health benefits of the olive oil, it might be an inexpensive treat because it's going to extend your life by at least seven to ten days. That what? Was, that was and a it's... Promo for... <laughs> no, focus. So also, it's also you don't have to go and get your laxatives to be paid for that. Because it is a bullet. I promise you. I promise you. How not to do ad reads one on one? We'll work on that, don't we? But the, Anyways, the, the, the the restaurant show, no joking aside, um, an awesome place to visit. Uh, just to get ideas to see what people are doing um to see the innovation uh 900 categories so there's thousands of vendors that's why it's a four-day show um I, if again like i would say if, if you've never been there uh flights to chicago are easy from most major canadian cities i know from calgary we even have direct flights to chicago with WestJet. you know out of out of toronto More and any other major cities yeah, it's it's Start, awesome. Started from Red Deer. From Red Deer? Yeah. I think you have to take a train, then a bus, and then um and then a plane. <laughs> and then when you get to Chicago, you do the opposite. Amazing. You take a bus and then the train. How your plane trains plane <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a story one day. That happened to, to me one summer. Didn't they go to Chicago in the movie? Yeah, I totally remember that. Exactly. We're totally not talking about your restaurant, anything you do. Yeah, Dominic shows up 15 minutes. <laughs> Anyways, so tell, so Dominic, what yes, were sir. you doing at 16? Were you trying to learn the the restaurant industry? At no, no, absolutely no. not. I was trying to learn a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's <laughs> definitely not. I told you. I was <laughs> at 16. I was. <laughs> At 16, I was repeating English for the second time, maybe the third. <laughs> and you know what? You, here's here's the truth, guys. Here's the truth. If I was smart, like as smart as I am now back then, I would have claimed that English was my second language because really it was. And that's why I had trouble and I would have had an accommodation for it because English was my second language. Are we gonna have like a moment? Do you want me to cry now? <laughs> I was looking for some sympathy. No, I do. Want... My English teacher was a jerk. Well, well, sorry to hear that, Dominic. It's not about you. It's about our guest right now. But you know what? I can thank him because that's probably why I'm in food service. That's why I became a baker. I'm okay with that. Do you know Dominic's yeah. a He's a professional baker. I didn't know that. Yeah, we hear it usually every show around this time. And you beat him. <laughs> Why did you take that away from him, man? No, I've only said it's it once. around the 25 minute mark. We have to hear about the freaking bacon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Chef, you I've only ever said intro, it once, man. Do you know you missed the intro? I, I'm sorry, guys, again. My I apologies. I played the fancy intro for you. Oh, then you. Let's, let's do it mid show. Let's do a commercial. Yeah, we can do a commercial right now. Want to do a commercial right now? Okay, we'll do. We'll do a commercial, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. And we we well, we have lots of time here. We can do anything we want. It's a podcast. No rules. It's time. It's, it's still just, sunny wow. in Edmonton, eh? Wow, so nice. It's, yeah. it's still nice. bright out, eh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. You're on the commercial. Here we go. Shut up, right? <laughs> Damn. 
Yeah, damn. You said that was you in the last picture there 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was before, that was his baker. That's baking life. He was eating his butt for his burger. Anyways, we're at the California Pizza Kitchen. We're having a blast. Great time. This is a podcast live on site here. You're 16 years old. You're trying to learn about the industry. When did you kind of graduate? Did you just go like right in or... Tell us more. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I started when I was 12, 13 years old. So you're like a pro when you're 16. No, with Parkway State. No. I just don't, I don't see. <laughs> I miss that fun. It was so much fun. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm hanging with people that are like 19 to 24. So you're just listening to things and having cool conversations. And a lot of, um, a lot of people at that time were not, they weren't, career servers like that was their kind of part-time gig yeah. while they were going to school yeah. with us. so i was hearing all about things that were taking in school and how this helped them transition and pay for school fees and buy cars and it was like you know a lot of cash um uh, will be the taxes back then because they do that now right uh well no yeah dominic <laughs> Throw another commercial up right around now. <laughs> but it was no, you it, you do claim your taxes, yeah, just no, so you no, know. We do, we do. Well, I know, but but I, I was I remember the year yeah. that when that t- turned on because we got audited. Oh. Yeah, I got audited as soon as they turned that on because it was a server making ridiculous money. And they're like, how can you live in like your twelve hundred dollar apartment back in the nineties? Yeah, and make this. Right? Yeah. Like, it was good money, man. Yeah. It was, it was just, it, it was a fun environment. So growing up in that was like, it wasn't even about the money. It was like, everybody was having a good time. Everyone was having fun. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't from the perspective that I had at the age of 15, it wasn't from a business perspective, it was from a fun perspective. So yeah. I'd, I'd watch people just laughing all the time, joking around, regular customers hanging out, right? People are just like enjoying themselves or they're drinking booze. And, eating pizza and life's just good yeah. no matter what else was going on outside of that restaurant and it, it wasn't it wasn't really until probably my, my mid-20s that i understood what it took to run a restaurant and really understand what it took to have to pay back an enormous debt and deal with that so I'm, do I'm, two restaurants pay back debts today Wrong question. No, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> well, I just—I don't know. Like, I just—I don't know how you can. It's really tough. It's really tough. It's right? really tough. We'll get that in a second. It's Dominic a likes talking about COVID. Ask him about the politics right now. I dare you. He's it. <laughs> He's been mm-hmm. on a show all day. I probably hasn't been able to talk. Uh, I'll uh, when we play our clips about the they questions we're asking at this. <laughs> Yeah, did Dougie when you were there? Yeah. What? I, I can did hear the background music. Dougie? Did you say hi to Dougie? I saw him on stage. Oh, he's, he's getting old. He's turn your hearing night up. Me? You're yeah. talking to me? <laughs> yes, you. No, I'm... <laughs> you said Doug. No, I said, did you say hi to Doug? No, I didn't say hi to Doug. Hi, Doug. No, no, no I didn't Doug, see Doug. Stage. Oh, no. At your event you're at right now. No, I know no. I what's in front of your event. No, no. I didn't say hi to Doug. No. No? No. No. No, no I, he was there, but I didn't say hi to him, no. We were we were busy taking care of customers. Like, doesn't matter who's in the house, right? You got to take care of the customers. The ones that are paying. And, and guess what? The politicians are the last person I want to see. I, I like Doug Ford, but this, the politician is the last person I want to see. Yeah, um, said, said no, I hear you. But, he but no, I, I was going to ask our guest. You got a whole bunch of customers in your restaurant. Here's yeah. here's the question. Okay, one of them's a celebrity, or one of them's a politician. 
and there's there's 70 there's 79 other people there does the politician get extra attention that's a great no the answer the oh, quick answer is no you probably that so the answer is no you're 100% yeah. right. not from me but there's always the fan situation yeah yeah for sure 100 percent but you're not you're not neglecting the rest of your guests because there's a, a yeah for sure yeah i think i think every 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 person in a restaurant would answer that the same way yeah. right messing up yeah. the camera i don't know what's happening there you go. All right. <laughs> now i'm super zoom. <laughs> super zoom he moves the mic for himself <laughs> <laughs> I got. I, I lost my attention once when I had Kim Mitchell in my booth. Oh, yeah. how's that? It was pretty cool. You were certain, Kim Mitchell's it, pretty cool. No, it's pretty it's cool. better better than Doug Ford. Like uh, Doug Ford's cool, but Kim Mitchell. Kim Mitchell, come on, patio lanterns, yeah. right? I know. Have a wild party. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyways, okay. So you're nineteen, eighteen. So you're eighteen. You graduate. So graduated high school. You're in twenties. Yeah. Went to twenty four. I went to go get my degree okay. right because that's what i was telling you is my folks are like listen they can't take your education from you and i love the county i love numbers. i love that numbers. saying by the way Do dominic why don't you ever say that to me you can't take that education away you have five years of university under me you can't take what you can't take the school education away from you no it's always going to be there and that's your backup plan right? and that's a good backup plan so it's a great plan. so i'm like i'm you know i graduate high school i go into uh doing my CMA program, Certified Management Accountant, which is just like, it's now the CPA program, sure. Certified Professional Accountant. And uh, interesting story around that, winding up to getting into restaurants and signing my first franchise at 23 was, I'm doing that and then I get a call. And the call comes in as I'm setting up my articling and preparing for the last leg of getting my accounting degree. And it's Jim Trelevin on the other line. Right? Oh, wow. And he says to me. Who's Jim Tre Who's Jim Trelevin for anybody who doesn't know? I know who he is. He, <laughs> he's, the, he's the owner of Boston Pizza. Man. That's right. So now you can yeah. guess what he was with. And uh, and so Jim Trelevin says, man, don't you want to like do your own thing? And uh, I moved to Ontario. I'm in Toronto. I'm driving down the DVT right now, top down in my convertible. You should really get out here. And uh, so within a month, I flown down, hung out with him. He took me to the Molson Indy. We had dinner with Greg Moore, we had Mario Andretti. Uh, Gretzky had just opened his new bar. Uh, so this is back in 98. And it was, man, it was like a dream. It was like, I, I wasn't even thinking about finances. I was so excited about yeah. the opportunity in front of me with Jim Treleving, with living this life of, uh, of a celebrity, as you, you know. And uh, man, it was so fun and sinker. So I said, okay, when am I moving down to Ontario? And, and that was it. I put my education on hold. I did not finish my accounting degree. Oh. I didn't do oh. it. And I, I jumped. Did you ever finish in. it? Nope. Oh man! Oh, you give you give me the education talk I'm five not, minutes ago. You did it. You did <laughs> it. I mean, I should have done it. But this opportunity, though, and, you know, for a lot of restaurant tours, this is what happens, right? There's an opportunity that comes up, and you're like, I need to jump at it. If I don't do it now, I won't do it later. Yeah. Mom, I need yes. to interrupt with you. Yes, sir. This pizza is to die for. Just so you know. Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, it don't say great. that. Come on, that's not fair. No. We just got to get Dominic just, down here now. Yeah, but no, wait a second here. Did Jay not tell you what the tradition is? No. Is that the, the guest would make sure that the hosts, in this case, me and Jay, both had pizza in our hands to be able to talk know, about. There's no, you can't get a pie in Toronto. First of all, you were late. But no. Wait, no, let me just tell you how that could work. There's there's express couriers that courier food all over the world, man. It happens. Yeah, especially good well, pizza. So, Dominic, just so you know, what we'll do is we'll um, we'll have a pie when you come up. Yes, yes, I I love a pie. Absolutely love a pie. I love pizza, man. Well, I love way pizza. this is going, we'll have to have part four. But <laughs> <laughs> I try not to talk so slow. Sorry. 
Uh, you dropped out of university, didn't get your thing, opened a restaurant. Oh, I got 24, married too. Got married. <laughs> like seriously, I, these it, it Dominic, was, we have like the most like craziest the, people on our show. It was the biggest. Yeah, what's ever. what's up with that? I know. Like, like, what could you do possibly, right, to disrupt your life all at one go? And like, yeah, that's so. But you lives. know what? I'm gonna say for our guest, he's he's. I think he's a go big or go home guy. Gonna do it, do it all in one shot, right? What the hell? Good for you. <laughs> it doesn't always work out, though, Dominic. <laughs> that one was. I, I thank God my wife is still with me. Let me tell you that. No, well, but but what? Did your parents disown you for dropping out of school a month before you were done? They probably wouldn't yeah. choke you. They became my partners. They became his the partners. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty. Is it well, and, and, and from and your dad's, your, your partners, your partners are smart people because they say. If you can't beat them, join them, right? <laughs> right, right. Oh, okay, man. so you're 24, you open a restaurant. Is it a franchise now? It's a franchise. It's a franchise. Boston Pizza franchise in Ontario. Okay. Which we love, Boston Pizza, who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, oh, you know what? I remember the big... <laughs> Sorry. You're telling me, Lionel Bill Lynch hungry? Is <laughs> no. that what you're talking about? No. <laughs> that guy I had to dress up as when no. I was 14. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I oh my god Oof, that's a late night show late late show no i also remember the big beers yeah the, the schooners the schooners yeah 32 ounce john do you remember those? those the schooners yeah 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 do they how big were they 32 ounces i don't know man man we used to pound them we used to do three they were good for the night <laughs> no 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 i i never drank that much no. saskatchewan is normal that's that's in the first fifteen minutes, right, Jay? <laughs> well, no, no. I, I just remember the big schooners. I just don't know if people do. Remember, pit people used to buy pitchers of beer. Yeah. Did people still do that today? That's a, that's a oh yeah. Glasses. It's called the team pitcher. Yeah. You used to get one for each like team. Ten glasses. Yeah, but beer out of that thing. I know, but did people still do that today in your restaurant? Do people I don't know. get we pitchers? We don't sell pitchers anymore. No? We sell glasses. Yeah, but do yeah. people? Would people ask? Do you ever I think get it, that? I think it depends on the venue. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Depends. We had a picture of sangrias yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do. We, we do drinks like, first we of do all. We do a that. mimosa tower. Here. Well, what? Yeah. We do a mimosa tower. Really? Yeah. Mimosas, yeah, Jay. Yeah. Have you never had a sangria or a mimosa? Yeah. Well, yes, I have. But like a, a pitcher of beer, a mimosa is probably a little better. I don't know. Yeah. It's way better. Yeah. It's a little more yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's get back to you. All right. <laughs> we'll get through this. We'll get like hopefully you're not like 60 because we won't make it. Yeah. We no, but Tom, like we really we have incredible people on the show all the time. I just remember Christian. You're falling into the Christian league, right? Yeah. Remember Christian? Yeah. yeah like we walked away. Like, we're in Calgary doing this. And we put it away or stuff. And I was like, that "Guy's crazy. He was insane, insane." You're you're getting close. You're getting close. Well, we're gonna. Wait, the, the last question is gonna be how many corporations he has because that might be the test. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. You know. Yeah, we're well, ask that. he. You know He's what? Can I, can I say something about your accounting career? Yeah. <laughs> he he stayed in it long enough to learn no. how to do accounting the right way. That's all I'm gonna say. It's a fudge. <laughs> I mean, I mean to do it right. No, uh, not budget. Come on, well, the no, government. You know the government. Mean. The government listens to these things, Jay. No, that like <laughs> you, you, you learned. You learned what you yeah. needed to know. Yes. Forty minutes into the restaurant show, I don't know if the government's listening. <laughs> it was like ingrained. So growing up, it was all math. Everything was math. It's so it wow. was like effortless to be honest with you and when I was 13 and I said I was prepping in the back I was also doing the accounts table for the restaurant and writing checks. well good for you so it was and like good for you real serious yeah, so it's like but, multi you know multi different areas of learning the entire time. congratulations to your parents yeah. because you have these skills now that that are going to serve you for the rest of your life for sure yeah it's awesome sure. it really is like a, a lot of people say oh that's crazy blah 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 you got Get all this stuff no it's good it's good to know like you don't know it at the time obviously right because you want to be out 
you know, riding your bike or doing whatever at 13. I don't know what kids do at 13, but you, you don't want to be doing it. The accounts payable plus washing dishes, but it, it gives you, it gives you so much more later in life having those skills and more importantly, the work ethic. I'm with you, Dominic. There, there's a funny story. It was like, so I was, I was 13, 14. I'm doing prep in the back and my parents go to sit down for lunch. So it's like 1.30 after the heavy lunch. I'm hungry. I've been working all day. They sit down, they start eating. I prepare my food. I go and sit down with them. I get my first paycheck. And it's like, so it's $2.41 an hour is what I was making back then. Um, and it was 13, 14, which was $2,000 wage. Well, how much? And $2.41 an hour. Jeez. And uh, I look at my hours and I'm like, this doesn't compute. I've worked 22 hours this week. Why is there only 20 hours on my paycheck? And the general manager looks at me and she says, we well, sat down and had lunch with your parents. And I said, those are my parents. Like they own the restaurant. <laughs> also when they told me that not the hours. No. Like, oh, yeah, they taught me, let me tell you, it's like nothing is, you know, your meal is taken care wow. of, but you're sitting down on company time. And you know, would I do that to my kids right now? Maybe not, we live in a different world. But all of those things that were but taught to me. You'll never that forget age, that. I'll you'll never, never forget, forget that. that. No, so, that's right. Like those, you know, you have to act like an employee at work. And so it was it was then that I stopped calling my mom mom at work and I started calling her by her first name. Only at work though. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Really you can't do that at home. It's like you're just trying to be <laughs> really oh yeah, let me tell you. I can't do that at home. <laughs> Unless I'm mad, then I'm gonna get one of these. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was a really interesting learning lesson. Yeah. Cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Dom, yeah. Just they're, they're... You stare to the roof and ask a really serious question. Okay. Um. Wow. I really. Do I have to do that? I gotta give a really. He always, serious... he always got this. He always looks up and he's like, and then I don't know if he's having a stroke or not. I'm 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 only seventy one. Like don't don't beat me up like that. <laughs> it's a damn app. <laughs> I'm gonna plug in soon. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Let me. Then, well, let me. Okay, so I, I just I want to go back to your story because you went and worked. You went and went to came to Toronto. You joined a major chain and you opened a, 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 a restaurant. I'm assuming with them. That's right. Okay, and then what happened? What's next after that? Oh, well, let me tell you about that. So we opened the restaurant. There's no there's, December of. Uh, 99 and we opened with the worst sales opening of a Boston pizza where where was it in in the GTA it was in Vaughan Ontario oh and we did we did fourteen thousand dollars opening pizza. you know why First too many Italians Italians uh, yeah lots of Italians in Vaughan right we 100 percent you're totally right we, we came and brought an American style eatery with an American game and tried to sell them pizza that was pedestrian and it wasn't the right type of pizza. So what did that teach me? Um, $1.3 million in debt. Uh, 1.3 million? Within three years, we lost a million three in that business. And it was, uh, man, it was very difficult, very difficult. So that's what was next. In. How did you manager, sleep? I was how did the you janitor, sleep? I was the skip driver. How, I was the everything. How did you sleep? That's what I said. That's your incredible the lesson at that age was like, how do you, how do you make this? Oh, we're we're dead there, Jay. We're we're missing. Uh... Well, while Jay gets that put back together, let's um. Let's talk about the show we're at here in Toronto at the Restaurants Canada show. But um, the 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 cool thing about what they're doing there in Edmonton is they're live from the California Pizza Kitchen. And um, talking about, I guess, not only the history of our guest, but kind of the life lessons that have happened. And that's been that that's for a lot of restaurants owners the story is the same sometimes in different in a different situation but it's um it it 
it it resonates with a lot of people the same story different circumstances different places different times but it it happens a lot the same way and that's um that's cool that's cool it's hard those are hard life lessons to learn right and as we just learned 1.3 million dollars in debt after three years uh you know we're, we're going to find out here in the next few minutes what uh what transpired after that and it's it's massive um let's see what jay said here uh there uh Nahid, um they 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 just had a i don't know if they had a power outage or or what happened but they will be back in a minute um the like i said the story is is often the same the circumstances the places that you know the the businesses might be different but there's hardships bef off, very often before there's immediate success and uh, for nahid yeah 1.3 million dollars um that's hard that's a hard pill to swallow especially you know it sounds like i think he said he was just freshly married right at the same time so uh you know if you if you hold on with us for the next few minutes we're going to get back together here and and hear what the rest of his story is and um for for the people that uh, are listening um we want to thank you uh, you know for for joining us in the late night show the late night restaurant show with me and jay um we have a lot of fun if you have questions go ahead and send them in if you're listening on uh, twitter or TikTok or LinkedIn or YouTube, uh, please send those in as well. And we'll try and get to them and, and, and answer them. There's there's a lot to know about Nahid's uh, story. Um, and then um, all our pod, or, you know, this is not a podcast in this case, um, where this show lives with the other podcasts to make them look bad is on uh, Spotify and Apple, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music. You, you can listen to us there um, and find all our other shows. And uh, Jay co-hosts another show with, with me, uh, the Safe Check podcast, where we talk about, you know, safety and training. And again, uh, much like Nahid, the, the person's story. So they're, they're very, um, they're a lot of fun, a lot of fun to listen to. We've had some cool guests on that show as well. Uh, recently, Dr. Darren Detweiler. Uh, and much like uh, this, the late night show, we have some very cool people that join us and, and talk to us. So if you get a chance, please, please check us out in those places. Send us your questions again. Um, we like to have fun. We like to, you know, we like to make it a little hard on our guests and uh, have them, uh, have them listen in and, and, you know, and, and, and answer the tough questions because there's, there's lots to know. So that's the, that's one of the cool things about uh, what we do. And we get to do in this sort of, uh, edutainment, you know, sort of the entertainment and, the, and the education part of it is when we, when we've got such a long window of, of an hour or an hour plus sometimes, uh, that we can, we can, we can get pretty deep into, into people's stories. And that makes that. That makes it resonate, I think, with a lot of people, which is, the, you know, the very cool part of it. And uh, I'm not sure where Jay and Nahid are. We'll see if they're coming back here. They should be back here. I think there's Jay now. There we go. Yeah, they're back. Jay, by the way, we were gone. What's that? We, we wanted you to know how it felt. Did you, do, did you even notice we were gone? <laughs> Well, I was talking the whole time, just like you. Were you guys listening to me? How did I do? Where are we? Where are we? <laughs> we, we had our own conversation. Did you even notice we were gone? <laughs> yes, I noticed you were gone. I was telling him that you guys both had to go to the bathroom at the same time. <laughs> we, we'd become close quite quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. We keep plugging this in. Okay, keep telling your story. All right, where are we at, Dominic? What are you, what are you we got? were at. Um, you were, you lost one point three million dollars, and it, what I did say while you while you guys were gone to yeah. the restroom there is that um, 
<laughs> the, the um, your gender, story will resonate. Yeah. By yeah. The way. Yeah. <laughs> your story will resonate with a lot of people because, well, well, the names, you know, the places might be different. The names of the restaurants might be different. The 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 times might be different. Um, it, it's it's still a common story, right? That you 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 work, you work, you work. You try something new, you fail, and then you know you you get back up and you get back on the bike. So that's that's the part I want to hear next. Is three years later, one point three million dollars in Vaughn, you know, the um, Italian capital of Canada. Um, what happened? So six six <laughs> months in, I well, just I, a little closer. Let's say it again. Pull the mic a little closer. Pull, Not the camera. He goes after can. the camera. <laughs> Dude, both. <laughs> okay, go. Super zoom, man. Super zoom. Um, can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You All sound right. great. All right. So um, six months in, uh, because I'd been in the business for a long time, there was a few other franchisees that had opened up Boston Pizzas around Ontario. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. One was Georgetown, and the gentleman who opened that up was a marketing guy. Didn't know a lot about the restaurant business, and I think uh, you know, anytime someone's selling you a franchise if you don't know what you're doing and you haven't been through the process of learning about the business correctly or know how to run the business um you shouldn't do it and i think uh his thought process was he could do it and he'll make a lot of money and he went in and uh, within six months he opened around the same time as me and he opened up out of the gates really strong and uh all of a sudden his financial statements are losses monthly but the sales are still up and it didn't make any sense. And so he he con contracted me out to consult for him to uh, check out things. And uh, I basically had to tell him everybody was stealing from him and, and he needed to make some changes. And he just didn't have the ability to do that because he didn't know how oh, to wow. manage a business. And so we ended up buying that business from him in order to save the situation. Um, and that helped to pay down some of the losses. And um, so I brought I brought one of our team. We also owned Boston Pizzas in Edmonton at the time. And so thank God we had my parents uh, and one of their business partners. Uh, everything in Edmonton was doing well. And so that was helping to pay down losses. And then of course we did we did this Georgetown deal. And and uh, yeah, three years in, like I said, it was a million three altogether, even after we had got Georgetown to help sustain some of the losses. And I ended up moving back to Edmonton, my wife and I, and we just had a baby. She's six months old. And that oh, was this, part of the, I remember this part, this part of the decision making process was like, how do I, Dominic, you're not supposed to this? look like you're falling asleep. <laughs> he's just, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. I love he's the gonna, story. You gotta work on your, I'm listening. your camera Press. skills. That's how I'm listening press. intently. I'm on my cell phone. I'm sorry, Jay. And um, <laughs> so, so it's like, how, how do we, how do we deal with this when we have a six month old and we're working constantly? Anyway, it was just, it was terrible. It was a really rough go financially, physically, mentally, emotionally. We ended up moving back to Edmonton and thank God, you know, my parents still had their business. And I came with my tail between my legs because I had moved out there thinking I was going to be this hotshot operator at the age of 23 with my first franchise. Um, and it was a complete opposite. And so mm -hmm. I sulked for about six months and, and hated it was imposter syndrome because I didn't I couldn't understand what I did wrong. And Dominic, you nailed it, right? Because it was like an Italian neighborhood serving. Um, the type of food that a lot of people yeah um, you're you're ser serving eat. like pierogies and that's right and that's right. yeah that's exactly right <laughs> so it's like that was mistake number one it's like know your demographic and i don't even know i was so excited about wanting to get away from my parents business wow. and open my own business that i lost sight of what it was that drew people to that business well and what what was the year again 90 what it was 1999 yeah, I think there was there was also an arrogance with some with lots of businesses back then. It's like, hey, this will work anywhere, right? And everybody's right. gonna love our stuff. And, and, and we were and the second you, Boston Pizza in Ontario. So like that the worked. second Boston Pizza and you bombed that? Yep. 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 
Yeah, nobody knew what we were. Did, did, and you no. write that book. You need East to write and, a book. East and West culture, even in Canada, is it's so still hard. different. Well, it's still hard today. Yeah, it's so it's different. Hard. So um, it was not a good experience. And it was like, I think it was for years that I'd get, I'd get on a plane to come to Toronto to either go to a conference or do something. And I would cringe because literally that flight um, goes over that theater and the Boston pizza that was under that theater. <laughs> Seriously? And I would, yeah, I'd literally, I'd just start, I'd, I'd, I was, I'd be shaking. Like I would feel so anxious as I was coming into Toronto because I would see that space Seriously? and it just killed me. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. Um, okay, so what did we do? We, we had three restaurants at the time in Edmonton and um, sat back and we restructured and said, this is what we need to do and this is how we need to pay the debt down. And we opened up, we ended up buying the Boston Pizza and Leduc. So we owned one in South Commons, one in Mill Woods. We had one on 97th Street and 137th or 127th um, Avenue, which is like a rough neighborhood in the North End. And so we ended up buying the Boston Pizza and Leduc off a guy who was selling it. He wanted to get out. And um, then we ended up moving our other Boston pizza. And then that's when we got into property development. We bought a um, piece of land and we built Still it out and created a, created a shopping plaza. And um, yeah, it was just, wow. and then things just started working. Yeah. Good for you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think I think the, the cool part is you didn't quit. I didn't quit. I had no choice. No, I was, no was embarrassed and it was my parents' money. And okay. you know, it's some of that was my money, but, but the reality was I let them down and that was the hardest thing to swallow. I let my wife down. I let my daughter down. It was like, how could I have made this stupid mistake? Well, and so that was the learning lesson. The, the, and, but and the, I, yeah, the, I, I, I have to say though, not, not only that though, but you, if you had not made that mistake, you probably wouldn't be where you are right now either. I was going to say, should look at this place, Dominic. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, be yeah. I believe it. Yeah. I be because you, if you had not learned that lesson, you might still be making the same mistake. Or the you, you would have just gotten bigger and bigger, and then exactly you would have been. Uh, you you wouldn't have been able to chain it. And at the age of twenty three, nope. if I think I would have prospered that quickly, it would have been a, a whole other problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're totally yeah. right. And and being in Toronto, it's a different lifestyle. Yeah, than you are here out west. Yeah. So, yeah. congratulations on moving back west because I think yeah. that was a smart move too. Well, it is now. I mean, <laughs> no, but you know, no, nothing say. against the people in Toronto. They're awesome people. Hey, they, Dominic, they, why don't you talk bad about Toronto people right now? <laughs> it's not like you're no, in Toronto. I'm gonna get. I'll get. I'll get swarmed here. <laughs> Did you get any people asking for your autograph today? No, <laughs> not <laughs> one. <laughs> Serious. Dude, I tried no. so hard. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of we got a lot of we got a lot of people that have, There's have like been to awesome restaurant. I mean, the restaurant scene there is it, it's, it's like awesome. New York and L.A. and like I know Vancouver is too. Yeah. We and, went and to a beautiful this. restaurant tonight. It's we were at a beautiful where, restaurant. Where'd you go? Uh, tonight we were at um, uh, Scaramouche. Okay. And so last night we were at. Ca Scatamouche, like Scatamouche, Scatamouche. Can you be defended? Scatamouche. Yes, it's it's, it's Sir Corp that owns that. That's Mark. No, I don't Corp. think so. No, it is. No, I know them. I know them. How do you know? Where, you don't tell, know. Tell me where them. it is. Sir Corp does not own that restaurant. Absolutely yes, they not. They do. They do. Scatamouche. Really? Yes. No, no. So you, the, so wait a sec. Wait a sec, who... Jay. 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 <laughs> what? Scatterbush is not Scaramouche. We went oh. to Scatterbush. On Saturday night, it was it was great. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the about the score. La last night we went to Capra's. It was great. And and tonight we went to Scaramouche. It's like a French restaurant uptown oh, Toronto. Okay, well, yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry. Scaramouche, a different story. To me. Yes. Yeah. Tr Sir Toronto has lots of great Jack restaurants. Astor's. It was. Jack Astor's, Red Devil, Alice Fazuli's, right? Surcorp yes. back then. Jack Astor's. Yeah. 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 Those are my competitors. Those I are. No those idea. Were. I they were when I was in Toronto, and I had no idea who they were until I landed Phenomenal. there, Phenomenal and I was like, brands. "Wow, these guys do great. They do a they great do. job. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They do. They still do. Yeah. 
They still do. Yeah. All right. So yeah, they still do. How do you now? Let's, let's speed up because we got to, you know, respect your time. Okay. How do you get to this now? In so, this big, beautiful restaurant right here. So 2010. I'm with Boston jump, Pizza. Jump I jumped 10 years. Yeah. So I'm with Boston Pizza. Um, I start to see the changes in a big franchise, uh, which some of the difficult aspects are when you're in a, a franchise with 300 units. Efficiency, productivity, uh, labor, those all become big, big concerns. Food cost. And you try to drive down all that and make it more simple. And as they started to do that, there was things happening in terms of um, the food was changing. So we weren't making dressings anymore. We weren't making sauces anymore. They were coming in. And uh, I wasn't a fan of that type of environment where um, you create efficiencies and the product integrity kind of goes down. And, and that was how I felt. And so in 2010, I sat down with my folks and I said, we need to change gears and we need to get into something where it's more of a culinary experience. And so I started researching other brands and there was two brands that I researched and one was California Pizza Kitchen and the other one was Brown Social House. And so I, I loved Cactus. I loved what they did. I loved who they were. And Brown's is um, the, the original, one of the co-founders of Cactus Club, um, opened up Brown Social House. Sure. And so I loved it. It was super cool. And California Pizza Kitchen was like, that's the pizza authority. Like those guys in 1985 in LA and Beverly is that Hills. All this is? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Super cool story. A couple of lawyers, you know, they hire some great pizza guys and they just start creating things, uh, putting duck on pizza, making a Thai chicken pizza when no one was doing it. The barbecue chicken pizza was invented. That by was them. theirs, it was yeah. Like, yeah, it was like, there's Serious? so many cool that was things. There? How do you know this, Dominic? Well, I got a pizza guy as my landlord who wow. who did who did That's all true. the research that he did, but you know, way back as well, right? In 2000, 1999, 1998, yeah. yeah. Super cool story. And so I was like, I want these guys. This is what I want to do. These are the two new brands that I want to work with. And so in 2010, I sent uh, a fax to California Pizza Kitchen. A fax. A fax. A fax. And I said, you still have that fax? We, we need to, I do still have that Seriously? fax actually. You should frame it. <laughs> you should frame it. You don't have a frame. I, I should frame it. You should frame right. it. Yeah. That's a big moment in your life. I, it was, um, they didn't <laughs> respond to me though. So I <laughs> should, I well, just, that's even more why you should frame like, it. Like it took me, I kept calling and calling and calling anyway. It was a, there's a big story around that too, but um, <laughs> it, it took us, well, it took us. Apparently we're going to get down to what you had for lunch soon. 12 years, man. 12 <laughs> years. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say. Convince them but, to come here. 12 years. Again, you, again, you again, 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 again. Like you're a never give up guy. I don't even know yet, but I'm, that's what I'm going to say, right? You're not, yeah. you're not going to quit. Yeah, I'm not so, going to quit. And so. um, we get the how many California pizza kitchens are in Canada? One, right? And I, and so, but that's just for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I, I get it, hundred percent, right? And Apparently and you're really you can't, can't read that poker face. <laughs> no, well, no. but guess guess they're they're going to do awesome, Jay. They're gonna do great. I, I, I'm sitting in one right now. And I just taste the pizza. I appreciate it's it. killer. Yeah, they, we're having a lot of fun with this brand. This brand is like super cool. cool. Yeah. It's like they give nice. me a lot of uh, flexibility and design and like working with their culinary squad. They're like, "What do you want to do? I want to do truffle fries. Well, we don't do truffle fries. Okay, send your chef down. Let's play with truffle. Serious. And so it's like this is what we do. Serious. How yeah. many locations are there? There's about 300 worldwide. Are so, you kidding me? Yeah. So they just opened two in Chile. Uh, oh. They opened another one in India. They've got, I mean, you're going to start seeing things unravel really quick uh, globally. And there's a, there's a lot around yeah. the country. Well, is that, and I know this is totally off a topic, but I read today that the, and I don't know if they need investors, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like there's franchises are starting to kick into gear this year. Is what I read this morning. Yeah, I feel everyone's yeah. bracing for 2025 is going to be a yeah. very strong year. And is so it? right now is the time. The unfortunate part, and this is what Dominic was saying, is like, it's tough being a restaurant operator right now in this environment. And with the way interest rates are going, with the SIBA loans that kicked yeah. in, with all of these things, it's like, you just keep getting your teeth kicked in. And but, being but, in the restaurant yeah. industry is really hard. But right now, it's like, we're kind of at this cusp where it, you want to invest right now. To, to be prepared for 20 
25. Yeah. And so that and is, that's, that's all that pain is creating opportunity. That yep. pain right now is creating real estate opportunity, employees opportunity, talent opportunity. It, because, you know, the, the, unfortunately, the, the, weak, the weak brands, have, they have to die. It's, you, know, you know what, you know what, Dominic, you're a hundred percent, right? The only part that I battle with is I go back to 1999 to 2003 and that was me. And yeah. so when I think about those people and I get a call from a landlord going, Hey, we have a site for you to take over, come and take it, but don't talk to the tenant cause they don't know. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to lock tough. them out and then we're going to give you the space. Oh, no. And I said, I will, I refuse to be the person that Good. puts the nail Good in that for you. coffin. So you go Good close them if you need to close them and you do what you need to do. And then you call me three months later and then we can yeah. do business. But I refuse yeah. to be the guy who's going to put you. that business owner out of business. It's not yeah. right. It's, and I have a reputation and I, I well, that, I that, you know, the, 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 the unfortunate of, of the, the unfortunate circumstances we're in right now is be, because There's landlords a, know the roof. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, but because well, I'm trying to be politically correct here without saying there's a bunch of asses out there, Jay. Okay. So, <laughs> well, thank the, God you didn't say that. <laughs> the, the, the landlords often, you know, there's some good ones out there for sure. I don't know. I don't know a lot of them. I know there's some good ones. Listen, but the, the reality is, is the, the landlords, all they want is their space filled, right? They, and they want to get the rents that they want to get. And not all brands can sustain those rents. They just can't. So yeah. the, the 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 greed on the landlord's part in 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 some sense is creating part of the problem because there's, there's pressures on all sorts of things. Rents don't have to go up like they have. They don't. Yeah, I agree. They, but I, they they, well, they, agree. they so. You know, if you can own the land, that's better. If you can own the building, that's better. Because then you have some of that control, right? If you can have a 20-year lease at a good rate, that's you're betting long term for sure, but that's better. Thanks. So the 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 if you have the ability, like you're saying to yourself, like you're saying, is the 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 the, the I think the landlords don't have to be like that. And if they were if some of them looked at this bigger holistic picture, they need strong food service and strong restaurants in their operations i think they should have they should have lower rates for for those independent businesses for a bakery a meat shop a you know a, um, a local convenience store or a local delicatessen so that that can bring that vibrancy back to those those plazas you, they, they can keep turning tenant after tenant after tenant the food places, if they're good, can last and last a long time and bring other people to those places, right? To support yeah, the you, other businesses. I'm, I'm assuming you drive a ton of foot traffic just in this area. Well, we, I mean, we, we have a California yeah, kitchen yeah. here and right across the street, we own the Brown Social yeah. House. And so we built the two together to do exactly what you said. Was that, like, was that, the, was that the reason? A hundred percent. And oh, we yeah. actually own the building here and yeah. we have the land too. So. So we did exactly what you said. There's an opportunity, not at the Browns. The Browns just celebrated nine years at that location. So, so you um, own this land, but not that one. Not that land. Yeah. Okay. So w I agree with you 100%, Dominic. You know what the other pressure is, though? It is these QSRs that are coming in and in multiples and in droves, and they have this franchise model. And so, if you look at the site we're in right now, there's every single burger company is in here. And that's not good for the franchisee either, right? There should be this like cap on, okay, we should have Saturation. Two, two burgers, two burger joints. Yeah. We should have two pop, do, pop they concepts. Do they don't do that? Yeah, right. Serious? Landlord. And I'm not going to say the landlord's greedy because what happens is that these franchises call them and say, we want to get in. We want to yeah. get in. We want to get in. But there's too many shopping plazas down every street. And so that creates a lot of pressure, not only for us when we're negotiating rents, it creates pressure for other franchisees because yeah. when I was with Boston Pizza, I didn't fight Kelsey's or Montana's or I fought the other Boston Pizza owner that was a kilometer and a half away from me because that was my radius determined by Boston Pizza International. Too close. And that's, that's why we got out because they would build one as soon as they know you're Seriously? doing huge volume. 
they'd build another That's one crazy. and there's a lineup of people that want to get in so it's not yeah but did you not have the first right of like refusal we, to have that second one no, we did not, and they that's that's a it. mistake too. That's that's, that's that bad on the bad on the yeah. franchisor's part because that yeah. territory should really be yours, in my opinion. Well, you know the the interesting part about Boston Pizza, which is this is an anomaly part, is it was born in Edmonton, and so the gentleman who owned the franchise before Jim and George, he had the perpetual rights, and so mm -hmm. every time we'd come with a site, he would he would say, "No, I'm going to take it and I'm going to build it," and that that was it. He owned the brand before. So this is that was his perpetual was right. His, they didn't grant really? that to anyone else. Uh, and the unfortunate part is that was Edmonton. And is, so, is that still happened today? He's unfortunately passed away okay. a few years ago. So that the rights pass with him. Do they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But I mean, you look at what we have in Edmonton. We have 32 Boston pizzas in Edmonton. Jeez. Like that's that's they they were opening McDonald's next to a Boston pizza. Like that's that's how many Boston pizzas there were. So, wow. Anyway, it's, did you know it's that just, Dominic? No. I it's I it's know. tough. It's really tough. And then the other issue is, as they start driving these rents up, your property taxes go up because now they're determining oh, no. your property taxes oh, no. based on no. your, your rent roll, right? Oh, and so boy, it's like, this is the next, this, and a lot of these guys don't know. These mom and pop operators don't know. They come in, they think they're gonna pay 35 oh. or 40 bucks, and then they get their rent roll with their property taxes and with their cam, and they're upwards of 70 bucks a square foot. And like you can't. How do you That's do that? How do you Dominic about property tax in Calgary. No, they're oh, just every that. every municipal Jay. Every municipal government in Canada is out to f and lunch on property yeah. taxes. They have no f yeah, and clue about where so reality is. They just don't. When they does don't. It get fixed? Does it ever get fixed? So how how like forget? Does it get you, fixed? Well, I think there should be a mass discussion about this from from Restaurants Canada. We need to jump into that and have this discussion because to be honest, why would we pay more when you have a retail environment right across the street from me and they have the same amount of occupancy, but then I get charged more on property taxes than they do. No, How's that making that, sense? Is that serious? Yes, yeah. Why? Yes. Why is that? I don't know. We should ask. Dominic, the local no, because, is no, because they, they probably say your values more. They, they would charge a restaurant business more. I think because first off, most politicians haven't got an app and clue about what the reality is in the world, period. Okay. They're in their own little world, Jay. That's the first problem. Second problem is a lot of them are bureaucrats to begin with. So they have, they have no sense. They've always been on the government paycheck. So they don't, again, don't know what reality is. And I think thirdly, property values. Oh, there, Jay puts up the, dis the disclaimer. <laughs> They're, they're not, they're, they don't represent our sponsors or our guests, and they're solely our own opinion. It, it, and that it's wasn't fair it, it was say, the system. It was the freaking system. Yeah, okay, the system. Um, we, we'll, we'll let, we'll let Nahid tell us what, what the problem I, is. I, the I the it, problem is, is that, yeah, yeah it is, is that they, they base them on property values, which are often inflated, to your point. They base them on rents or what the net rent is for the for the building. I think I don't know how that exactly works, but again, that are inflated. They used to have these these boards that would, you know, the the a property assessment board that would say, well, here's what the assessment is. It's all a pile of shit. The assessment is based on how much money they need. It's not based on anything else, and they overspend like drunken sailors on stupid shit that they shouldn't be doing. Our taxes could be half and we could have twice the services if they got their head out of their ass and they looked at what was happening in the real world. They should they should not be putting taxes up, not only for businesses, they should not be putting it up for homeowners either. The taxes have to go the other way. They have to go down. Agreed. And here we are. We're in a big, government. massive problem Where because government's super high, right? And banks are making hand over fist money. And now we're in a position where people can't afford their homes. Yeah. And we have this houseless crisis and it just, it, it continues and continues and continues. And in a country like Canada to have this many people without homes is yeah. sickening. It's absolutely yeah. sickening. And then you've got your municipal government, like in Calgary and in Edmonton, they, they've got the same stupid rules around tax, around straws and around disposables. What about the people that don't have a home? What about the potholes in the street? 
What about the what about the snow that's not getting plowed? The buses you got you got twenty of of your thirty electric buses that don't run. Mm-hmm. With a lawsuit, right? yeah. Is With a lawsuit, lawsuit and how much? Yeah. How yeah. many fifty million dollars wasted? I don't know how many million dollars they yeah. spent. Yep. Yeah. How many how many homes could that have built? Yeah. For, it could have built. I, I, I'm sure it could have built a shelter with 200 beds in it for 50 million bucks. Way more than that. Way yeah, there you go. So yeah. much land so, in this city. I mean, that, yeah. the, 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 politicians like, quickly oh, forget see? that there's Jay Jay. They quickly forget that there's one taxpayer. Okay, and if they keep taking money out of your pocket and my pocket, that does not allow me to support that local business. I know that I know. does not well, allow why, me, right? That's why we're seeing a lot of these local businesses are have the challenge right now. Bankruptcy rates are through the roof right now. You know, Restaurants Canada said 121, 121% up over last year, same time. It's, it's scary. It's scary. Well, you look at scary. every time I turn on the news, it's like this is these are the restaurants that are folding. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Vancouver, Calgary. Edmonton, but but, but when, like, when, when does the, when does it break? When's the stuff? Because you can only. It, 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 it only when breaks you... when they stop taking everything away from you. Because you, they, they're taxing you at the pump. They're taxing you on your paycheck. They're taxing you at the grocery store or at the store, right? When they buy, when you buy anything, they're taxing you when you fill up your car. They're taxing you when you ask for a bag at the take at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. All those little pennies add up, man. They do. And now I, I don't get to go for, for a pizza. I don't get to go. I don't even I'm like I'm, I keep trading down till I can afford my hamburger. And then even that I got to trade out. Yeah. The scary part is, you know, you compare 2022 to 2023 and you see 2023 is like record numbers, right? On 2022. And what they thought was an excitement in the economy was just people having lack of ability to spend. And now they're spending like, unreasonable amounts and it and and everything starts going up in price and so this has created this problem in that you know through canada p1 p2 p3 periods one two and three Mm -hmm. have been detrimental for all these businesses everyone i've talked to around alberta is in negative in the negative numbers compared to last year in the restaurant industry. in the restaurant industry really everyone everyone in edmonton is just it's brutal it is and then brutal. how much how much counts. can you raise your prices you can't well you have you no cho- you're almost you have no choice because every time i get my update on what's going up from my distributor it's every one of their vendors is raising prices no i They're understand that but they, like, like you you, you just, also understand that yeah, your your yeah. customers have a breaking point though too right i think restaurants are reluctant to raise their prices they don't want to do it they have to you're right you have Dominic, to but we had that show with uh, Derek. Was it Derek? Derek, that we had the other day, and he said that we're already hitting. We're already hit the ceiling. Yeah, we we have hit the ceiling. Yeah, we've 100%. hit the ceiling. We can't go higher. A hundred percent. And like, you know what, guys? I've been, I've been to. I would say that, but we. we can't. I've been to a few restaurants. I think the prices in Alberta are higher than they are here in Ontario. I really? think. Well, the only reason I say that is I think because some of the distributors. Some like you know we don't we don't necessarily have the efficiencies that they do in Ontario as far as food and importation and all that stuff. Um, but I think like you look at cars, you look at a lot of other things. <clears throat> a lot of retailers take advantage of Alberta's strong economy. There's a thought out there. I, I think it's unwritten, but that Alberta can bear more. Is that do you, yeah, well, do you feel there's, that? There's, well. Mm, well, they always think we have more money. That's what. Well, that's because so we, did, tell we, we tell her. Yeah, we tell you. It's like, but, but every you know the, the is consumer problem, in Alberta, right? as much as we're doing a slightly better, maybe because we have a a little bit higher paycheck, they're hurting just as much, don't you think? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always think that we always care. I, it'd be interesting to find out what our debt ratio is because per person. I always said this when I lived in Saskatchewan for three years. I'm like, and, and Saskatchewan is is a province that just never really had a break. A little bit in the early 2000s with the oil, but it always was the province when I lived there was, you know, you just made do with what you had. And then um, 
I think when 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 I lived there and you look back at Alberta, it's just it was that whole thing is like you guys can afford whatever you want, that mentality. But I tell you, you want to go back to a province that really that was a shocker to see was going back from here to there. That was really interesting to see what 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 our lifestyle is like here versus there, and and their debt ratio. I think in the Regina space, I always said you know they have houses that are older, they don't have the fancy cars. Not everyone drives a you know fancy car. You know I think there's more wealth there than there is here, in a crazy way. Well, there most people would say they're more frugal than people in Alberta are, Jay. I don't know if that's well, I, fair. Well, I, well, yeah, too. But I, I just think that, like, when I was there, I was like, these people have a lot of money, but everything's paid for, right? And I, I, my, my, one of my favorite lines that one of my old bosses said was, "Money doesn't care who owns it." <laughs> <laughs> you like that one, Dominic? I like it. That's a keeper, right? Yeah. But it's true. It's yeah. true, right? So um, I think when you look at here, so how do we Alberta, how do we change we it besides protection? Restaurants Canada talking to government and the government doesn't care or listen to them necessarily. What's wh- wh- what do we do? I don't know. When you find that silver bullet, or I mean, up, well, I'm asking our guests, not you, Jay. Because we don't. I tell you, I tell you what we're doing locally <laughs> is we have uh, hosted meetings in all of our sites in our restaurants, and we call it co-optition. You, what? you work with your competition. So you cooperate yeah. with your competition. Co-opetition. And so we all sit dude. together and we have restaurant meetings. Nice. And specifically here at California Pizza Kitchen, we have meetings for all. We invite every local restaurant in the neighborhood. And they come out here and we hang out and we talk about what Q1, Q2, Q3 look like. We talk about how we can consolidate buying. We talk about what the pressure points are for staff. We have now opened a chat group, WhatsApp group for all the local general managers. So if there's an issue or something happens and you need assistance or you need to uh, report something, it's immediate throughout the site. The other thing we talk about is like, how do we deal with snow removal? How do we deal with waste management? You know, uh, we have a landlord that does a really great job here. But what can we do to benefit each other and work together to, let's say, halt the amount of other food establishments coming in here? So if I feel like there's too much pizza, I'm going to meet with all the other pizza vendors and go, like, how many more do we need? Yeah. And, and they're going to say the exact same thing. Did you so, start so this? We, we all, yeah, because, really? because really? It's, it's important for all of us. Really? And there's Ma and Pa operators there, too. And they're not going to survive. And it's tough. It's, really- it's a really tough business. So that's that's what we're doing from a grassroots level. If we can start doing that in more sites and instead of being enemies with other restaurants, we come together and we say, how do we make this site successful? And that's the that's, objective. That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that smart? That's brilliant. It's very smart. What'd you call it, it again? Co-op? Co-opetition. Co-opetition. Yeah. Cooperate with your competition. Co-opetition. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, um, what do you think of those things? Co-opetition. Because Jay, you have a, a, a fantastic way of finding super smart guests. That make us look like idiots, me and you. But that's <laughs> keep, keep doing it because I'm okay. To, Honestly, I'm, I'm okay bad. To, like seriously, I'm okay to look like an idiot because this having guests on like this. Listen, um, congratulations. That's awesome. It's it's Thank smart. You. First off, it's smart. Um, but really, it's awesome because you can still be competitors, but that doesn't mean that there's many things that you can cooperate on because you can and you should. We're all fighting the same battle. Exactly. So, so cool. Let's, let, let, now he's got to get back to bed. He's probably going to get to bed soon. He's got to open another Are restaurant you tomorrow. I, I'm, 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 I'm old now. Like, my, my, kids it, just, oh, my kids tucked me in. My kids tucked me in. That's awesome. Well, we we, we want to thank you, first of all, for taking the time. Pizza, I am taking that to go um, so my kids can taste that. It's phenomenal. Don, Don when you come up here, we'll, we'll I'm coming. Coming next week. We'll hang out. We'll come next week. Yeah, we'll do another show. We'll part five because we're gonna have to cut this up into three um, <laughs> with our with our five minute bathroom break. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you. Thank you for allowing us. To Thanks so much. Home. My pleasure. And your story, I just think it's awesome, and we have to have more people like this because you know what, Dominic, when you sit in, when you listen to operators out there and you really hear what's going on it's a different take 
yeah completely different take than what we hear all the time yeah. or well, we hear you. Yeah, we tried to keep us. And like I'm, I'm glad because you know what? We ended really on a positive note that um, that Nahid's doing with his with his neighbors and his fellow businesses in and around him. Um, and that's you know that's true to kind of what we try and do and keep it positive as much as as much as a lot of shit going on out there, right? There there is positive things that can happen that you can do, and just at the like trying to trying to affect this big massive picture isn't isn't always possible, right? But doing it locally is smart. So cool. Thanks so much. You Thank you. Any Appreciate last you last words of advice for me? We'll give you the last second here before Dominic reads our credits. Last piece <laughs> of advice. <laughs> know what you're getting into, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I've done that a lot of times. Now. Become an accountant. To become an accountant. <laughs> That didn't help at all. <laughs> graduate. Let's say yeah, graduate. Advice graduate. that's graduate. never been Fully given, by the way. School. <laughs> yeah. Well, Good for you. So <laughs> that's awesome. Thank Everyone you. Everyone else. Bye, everybody. Thank you again, Dominic, you sit, stay safe out there. Yes, Keep I will. Keep in Toronto, people, because I'm sure it helps. <laughs> Anyways, we Dominic, by the way, we have a show tomorrow night. And to everyone else, thank you, National Restaurant. Association show, we love you. Great stuff. I hope you didn't kill you that we were. What, what are the dates, battery. Jake? Can you remind us the dates? May, May 18th to 21st at the McCormick Center in Chicago. If you miss there, you miss it. If you go to Podcast 24, you will get a discount, fifty-five dollar discount. But you can only get that up to May 16th, and anything past May 16th, you're screwed. And if you don't, you get a discount. Go to their website. Promo code Podcast 24. Did I cool. do that all by memory? You did all by memory. You did a really good thing. Isn't that really good? Uh, hey? 55 Anyways, American yeah. dollars. That's big money. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's five Starbucks if you want to bring that down into Starbucks. <laughs> poor Starbucks. Poor no, Starbucks. it's not that much money. <laughs> did you just say poor Starbucks? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. We've had them on the show, so we can say that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again. Dominic, I'm going to shut this down. Everyone else, have a great Cheers, day. Cheers, everybody. Take care. And we're, we're Thanks, back Nate. again Take tomorrow. Care. Thank you, Dominic. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Here we go. Thanks again, guys. Good night. <laughs>